it is Wednesday, which means a very special guest is here. Savannah Guthrie, please welcome Savannah. Hi, Hi lady. Good to see you. Hi, thank you. How are you? Good. I, I think we should call it. Looks so cute. I think we should call it like Savannah's Day. Savannah's Day. I know when you say Wednesdays to Savannah, it's like Tuesdays with Maury. Remember yeah. that old book? Oh, it doesn't end. Well. I know. I know yeah. exactly. Okay, this is going to end better than yes, that. Yes, it will. Uh, and speaking we'll of happy endings, yes, uh, we're starting today with the latest on this Thai soccer team. You know, those twelve boys were rescued mm. along with their coach. They were trapped in a cave for nearly three weeks, and today, more than a week after their dramatic rescues, they're leaving the hospital. <laughs> and Speaking out for the first time. I'm dying to hear from them. Uh, and thankfully, NBC News correspondent Janice Mackey Fryer has the very latest on them. Watch this. In high spirits, sending good health, the Thai soccer team that captivated the world is finally heading home. First appearing here, wide eyed and smiling for cameras, to say thank you to rescuers and the world for getting them out alive. And across the town of Maysai, where the boys live, families are getting ready for a homecoming like no other. For one of the boys, Dom, that means a bigger room and a party, says his grandmother, for the 13th birthday that passed inside the cave. She says, I expect him to head straight for chocolate ice cream. You must be very excited to get Dom home. Yeah, I go. She tells me they're so happy and thankful that he's getting a second chance at life, that they're all getting a second chance. The images of the trapped boys and their coach in the cave were haunting. The three-day mission to rescue them, unprecedented. Bringing in equipment and experts from across the world, including 200 divers, who the day before the mission started, practiced at a local swimming pool with boys the same size and weight as the team. Every move inside the cave, planned and precise. Each boy fitted with a full face mask, tethered between two divers, strapped to floating stretchers, and sedated so they wouldn't panic. The one wild card rescuers could not control and could have been fatal. The, the good thing about doing that is that they won't remember anything about the, the journey out. It's as if they've lost two hours of, of their lives. Isolated in the hospital for over a week, behind masks and glass, the boys and their coach will only now realize how much attention has been focused on them. The 25-year-old coach, Ekapal Chatawong, is credited with helping the boys survive, teaching them meditation to stay calm, giving his rations of food. I'm so proud, I prayed every day, I'm so proud, his grandmother told us. Today, she's wearing her best clothes for the best reason. A family reunion that has been a month in the making. God, can you imagine that? Oh, it's incredible. I, all they did with the swimming pool, I didn't know anything about that to prepare for the rescue. I didn't either. And they also said, um, you know, the boys really had no sense of time. Nobody was wearing a watch. Of course, it's pitch black in the cave, so they had no idea how many days, weeks, months they had been there. They had yeah. no real feel for it. They said they thought that when the divers first found them, um, after 10 days, they, it was a hallucination. Like, they were so out of it. They had had, each boy had had blackouts. They hadn't been eating. They'd been drinking cave water off the side of the cave. Um, and they thought it was a, was a hallucination. Can you imagine, like, the miracle of seeing another human being? So our correspondent, Janice Mackey Frere, says that the boys in a couple weeks are going to go spend a week and become some kind of monks right. as a they're way They're going to, to monk camp Yeah, for a they're week. going to monk camp. Um, <laughs> as a way of saying thank you for all the prayers that went up on their behalf That's and just amazing. to honor the, the people of the world who prayed for them. Among the many brilliant decisions they made in getting the boys out was the sedation. Yes. They didn't realize the boys would, had all been sedated because that's the thing you think about is the panic you'd feel when they're bringing you out, right, through that cave, like a four-hour journey, and they've got the mask on, and the, yes. the rescuers were worried that if the boys moved around too much, the, the mask would come off and the water would go in and they're sedated. They said they thought they, they were going to lose probably four to five boys in this rescue effort. And they got them all out. It's incredible. It really it's is. really And they, I guess like, they're not going to have any memory of it, which maybe is of the, of the actual rescue and perhaps that's a blessing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And they're young enough that, you know, some of the details should fade, although there's no way this isn't becoming a movie. Zero oh, chance. 100%. Right? I mean, it's probably a movie. Right. Probably a movie, a miniseries, docudrama. It's going to be on Lifetime this Friday. Yes, exactly. Um, <laughs>
<laughs> All right, so speaking of amazing, this there's a uh, there was a trapeze stunt on America's Got Talent, which is an NBC uh, show, and it went wrong. Did you see this? Yes, yeah, so people are saying yes. A lot of people are shaking their heads. Um, it went wrong. It's a husband and wife. The guy, Tice, is legally blind in his right eye. He has a, an eye disease. The wife, Mary, um, was doing the act, and the, their two-year-old son, Jax, along with Mary's mom, was what we're watching. Can you watch what happened? OMG. Look at her. She was okay. Uh, miraculously, she was okay. Uh, Simon Cowell is pointing out she, she could have broken her neck. Almost did break her neck. She, and the look on her face, though, like she's, she looked stunned. Yeah, kind you can of, tell right? she wasn't like, expecting okay, that. What just happened here? Um, that, and then, like, the, there her little boy watching her. Like, that's. So that's a husband and wife team? Yes. Imagine, <laughs> you're like, honey, come on. Sorry. <laughs> you got one job. So sorry, babe. <laughs> <laughs> you get a little awkward. <laughs> I don't know. Like, this, this is why I don't do a trapeze act. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but that, and that's the only reason you don't do <laughs> totally. a trapeze act. Because otherwise, you would be yeah. trapezing, definitely. I know. What, where are the flames? I didn't see it very closely, but the, 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 into she, the flames. Yeah, she went into fire. Yeah. But there was a big mat, you know, at the bottom. But, you know, the big mat. You wouldn't think the big mat would save you. It did, and, and in better news, um, they're moving on to the next round. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they're moving I forward. I hope so. <laughs> like, come on. By the way, we did reach out to America's Got Talent since we own them, yes. and uh, they blew us off. Oh, <laughs> even know? No response yet. Was but that it, live or taped? No, it was know? taped. It so was there, taped. there was a decision okay. to air it. Yes. I mean, I'm sure knowing that she was okay, yes, it, it made a difference. And probably got their permission. Yeah, we hope. But you know, speaking of husbands and wives and like letting each other down or not. Um, one of the things that's in the news today is how, do you ever see, hear the story about how you like, you start to look like your dog? Yes. You know, have you ever seen, and don't, isn't it true? I, when you see somebody walking their dog down the street, I, nine times out of day, I'm like, oh my God, they're like twins. Yeah. And I feel like I look like my dog and, but apparently it's true for husbands and wives too. Oh, you start to look alike. Their fashion. And the oh. reason is wives take over their husband's fashion. And then the husbands start to learn in a perfect world. And then the husbands just start doing it on their own. And, and apparently the wives choose stuff that is not unlike their own. So did you redo Mike's fashion when you guys no, got together? No, not at all, because Mike is actually quite fashionable. He is. Yes. I, and in fact, he probably had more of an influence on me because he had he like has better taste in pretty much everything than is that I right? do. Yes. So I didn't have to clean his act up. He I, had to I clean saw mine pictures out. of you guys at Wimbledon. He did look amazing. Oh I have yeah, to he say. was okay. very dapper. I don't know. I don't know if you have any pictures that are at the show, but he was so obsessed with his outfit. Like I was like, <laughs> "Can we go to Wimbledon? Or are you still in hair and makeup?" <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "Should I wear the blue pocket square?" Yeah, it was just the... all tied together. Yeah, he really got into the whole Wimbledon dandy look. I got to tell you, dandy, interesting choice of word. <laughs> um, I had exactly the opposite experience with Doug. Really? So when I met Doug, can I tell you he was wearing? Not just a short sleeve golf shirt, but yellow. It was a yellow short sleeve. Pale sorry, yellow, sir. bright yellow. And um, with khaki pants that were high waisted, with the <laughs> flap front. I'm telling you, and his hair was like all down on his eyebrows. I, I'm like across the bar, like that. Like, <laughs> okay. And then, so we met in July. By December, we were at Christmas. I gave him an entirely new wardrobe. He was like, you are the most generous person <laughs> I've ever met. I'm like, oh, that's just me. <sighs> <laughs> and now he, he looks good. It is true, though, like, if you're with your significant other, as I said, Mike always said, was a good dresser. I had a boyfriend once, and I hated his clothes. Like, I just was like, oh, why are you always wearing this? It's embarrassing. Like, it's just like cargo shorts or whatever yes, it was. Yes. And one time we went out for Chinese food and he opened the fortune and it said, you will get new clothes. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, did you? I was like, no, <laughs> but I swear. Yeah, the fortune cookie said so. You know, both of us, we're, we're the same age. Yes. We went to college in the 90s, yeah. right? And, and law school in the 90s. And the guy I was dating back then was a big fan of the acid wash jeans. Oh, yeah. Or the acid wash, yeah. right? Who wasn't? And so I managed at some point, I mean, even back then I recognized that was a bridge too far. <laughs> and. Um, managed to get rid of those. And then flash forward a couple years where I decided it would be fashionable to wear an entirely black velvet jumpsuit. It was like a cat suit. Oh. Like just, I was wearing this around. That sounds good to me. And my boyfriend, Jim, at the time said, 
what is that about? And I said, I have to express my individuality. <laughs> and he said, I tried to express my individuality and my clothes got sold for all you can grab for a dollar at your mother's garage sale. <laughs> What's your worst fashion trend you've ever embraced? Mm hmm. The jean short with the lace, the jean skirt with the lace at oh, the bottom. Oh, yes. I with forgot the, about that. Remember that with like leggings at the bottom, oh, like the yeah, little leg warmers, yeah. I mean, the leg warmers at the bottom. Yeah. Which I thought was hot. You? I bet it was. Well, in, I had the tail in seventh grade. <laughs> I had really short hair. And remember the tail? Yes. Yeah, I had it. I'm and trying to figure out whether you're joking. No, I'm 100% <laughs> serious. 100% serious. I had the tail. Then I would dip it in peroxide so it would become blonde. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had a blonde streak. I bet that looked hot. Did, Speaking of pictures. Didn't have a lot of dates then. We really needed to bring this to you. I'm going to get you that picture before the week's out, and we'll show you that version of Savannah. But no, first, you will not. First. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there. And click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.